Hank Green has food science questions and we're gonna help him out. Tempo Pro Bar, Los Churros. <laughs> Something has gone wrong with your dough and the outside has become a hard, solid, impenetrable surface. Okay, this thing that just happened is called case hardening. That churro got cooked way too fast. Usually that happens because the oil is way too hot. So the outside of the dough gets solid immediately. More and more of the dough gets cooked. The whole thing solidifies from the outside in. You wind up with a bunch of steam in a very small space. And that's not just a guess. You can tell that's what happened because churros are fried dough. They're supposed to be soft and not sound like you're knocking a door. That thing is case hardened. Now here's the fun part. If you Google case hardening or ask an AI about case hardening, it'll probably tell you about metal because a lot of the metal stuff that we make, we case harden it on purpose to make it more durable. But case hardening also happens with food. And when it happens to food, it is almost always bad. Like with cheese. If you're making a hard cheese like Parmesan, the last step is you age it and you let it dry out for months. If you try to age and dry a cheese too fast, the outside and only the outside will get really hard and dry really quickly. Case hardening. And then all the water that's still inside the cheese can't really get out. So the inside stays pretty wet and is maybe starting to go bad. That's a bad cheese, you're gonna have to throw it away. The same thing can happen with salami and other cured meats. If you dry them too fast, they get a hard case. Sometimes they'll call it a pellicle around the outside and it can stay wet and kind of sloppy on the inside and it can go really bad in there because it's meat. And that is why people who are really into cheese and cured meats are always going, you have to age it slowly. And they'll talk about how that's because the flavors need time to develop and that's kind of true that's also happening but a lot of it is just the physics of case hardening and making sure it doesn't happen with food you usually want to be cooking or drying the whole thing at the same speed so the inside doesn't get left behind and the inside is always going to be slower at getting cooked or drying out just because it's on the inside it's not magic it's just physics and i think it's really important to bring that up because this is a really big part of making food properly and it almost never comes up outside of really niche food science circles i think when people hear food science what they hear is it's people somewhere in a company plotting to make flavors that we can't resist when a lot of what food scientists actually do is double checking the heat transfer physics on corn dogs to make sure that when you cook them the batter cooks quickly enough that it stays on the corn dog and doesn't fall off but it doesn't cook so fast that you bake in steam bubbles that's a lot of what food scientists actually do it's such a huge part of making food even when we're at home you can make an exploding churro at home if you mess it up right that's a whole really big important part of food science that we just don't even know exists and if you google case hardening food science won't even come up so it winds up feeling like a secret even though everything happening in here is very everyday basic physics of of steam and, and what happens when things cook. So yeah, this exploding churro is a really great example of why food science is important and how we kind of pretend it doesn't exist. So even people who are really curious about science and how the world works can't find information on it. Even if you know exactly what case hardening is and you Google it, you still won't find a lot of examples talking about food. It's almost always metalworking, even though it's a huge problem in food. I don't know, it's, a, it's an interesting scientific phenomenon that has a name and is really important. So yeah, let's throw it out there.